it is when everything's going great. This sounds amazing. This sounds so great. Um, but specifically, this particular World Championships, you had a, a setback of seven nothing. And I know it's not about winning, um, but clearly it wasn't uh, going the way the girls wanted it to, or the coaching staff wanted it to. Things just were not clicking at that moment. Um, what specifically did you go back to and how did you kind of rein things in? I know it's not ultimately about winning for you, but it is about having success and being the best you can on the ice at the time. So, um, yeah, did you take a moment? Did you, I mean, what, what were your thoughts and how did you sort of manifest that to your team to then move on from there with these really young girls? I mean, this is not easy at that age. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so I, I think it kind of goes back to like I again I believe that if you can build that foundation and build that culture, then it becomes easier. It's easier, you know, the forming, norming, storming, performing stuff, right? Forming, storming, norming, performing. Anyway, yeah, I think that's that. That's it. It's and showing them as we were building that that uh, pyramid, we showed them that we're gonna have conflict. And it's not always going to be a perfect trajectory towards a gold medal. Um, that there's going to be peaks and valleys. And when we go through the valleys, the um, the teams that that have a less healthy culture will they won't be able to get through that, and then they'll implode. The teams that have a healthy culture will be able to get through that, and they'll become stronger for it. Um, so that's where I know you asked, asked this question initially, Sammy, is that that's where we, we showed them that when things aren't going well, we got to come back to the foundation of our pyramid. Acceptance, um, trust, trust in the system, trust in the program, trust in each other, because that's one of the things that we found is that everybody was trying to do everybody else's job. All these players are so skilled. And they're such great kids. Like they're, it's not, a, there's, to me, their on ice behavior wasn't selfish. It was, they were so concerned about helping the team win. And they're so used to carrying the teams, their club teams, um, that that's how, in their mind, they needed to help. They needed to to go out and and you know dangle and do what the things that they were used to doing that would help them get a goal and help their team succeed, and um, so so we had to come back to that was part of it is they had to trust the process they had to trust that the coaches information that we're giving them that the knowledge that we had shared with them. Um, the game plan. They had to trust that. They had to trust in each other because they're also trying to do each other's job defensively because they didn't really trust each other on the ice. They trusted each other off the ice. Um, and so, and then the acceptance and, you know, what happens when things start going wrong is we start to point fingers. So now we're not accepting others. We're, we're you know, we're blaming them and, um, and saying, well, this is what you are, so that's why we're losing. And so, we came back to the foundation and we told them, let's go back to the foundation, right? Like this is this is where we need to be. Part of that is you guys need to believe or trust that the coaches are making decisions and we're giving you information because we have the experience and we know what's going to help you. Um, after those two uh, losses, I, I have to admit that I was thinking, okay, are we, you know, did we miss something? Are we going in the wrong direction? Is there something that... <laughs> That uh, do we need to change, right? Because you always go there as a coach. What do we need to change? And so for me personally, I was able to draw from from Vicky and Tara. And again, this is this is the power of others, right? And they they said, no, we we can stay the same. We can keep going, and in doing what we're doing, and together we came up with. Uh, we had to have a as another coach that I met some time ago. A come to Jesus discussion with them because we believe like my my internal belief is that you you'll always well you you create an environment that is ripe for success when it's a positive environment like the ones we've been talking about is positive culture um we had that 
But I think what we were missing was that one piece that to help tie the two together, that if you want to reach your goal, which is winning a gold medal at the highest level, ultimately, if you want to you want to reach your goal, you're going to have to come back to the foundation. You're going to have to trust us. We told some stories. Um, this is the night after I think our, our U.S. loss um, that we felt were relevant to the situation about certain individuals. Um, I know Tara has had shared some some messaging about her experience with the national team, and you know she wasn't always the she was able to play a role like a seventh defenseman kind of a role. I think Vicky had a similar kind of discussion. In fact, she uh, she told a story about uh, Geraldine Haney. So she was able to draw draw from her experiences. I told some a couple of pandas hockey stories. One of which was a story that came out of my uh, our game against Wally Kozak's dinosaurs, UC dinosaurs, because that was a crazy game. You remember that one, Wally? I don't know. Was it zero zero going into the, like the, the ten minute mark of the third period, or something like that? And then yeah, and then Calgary got a goal, and. Uh, like it was just a nobody was scoring any goals. It was this defensive battle. I think it was actually later in the game, like might have been six minutes left in the game, and probably Dana Antel. I think it was Dana Antel scored a goal, and then it, you could just feel our whole bench sag. Like, okay, we're not going to win this game, and um, if not for our captain, who made a personal decision that she was going to go out and she's going to make a difference, and. Uh, scored the goal the next shift and now it was 1-1 right so okay and then she came back in and she screamed at everybody we're not going to lose this game slam the door door and you could feel everybody's energy come back up so it was just a anyway so I wanted to tell that just because we we're playing against Wally so that wasn't coaching Wally you were I was being out coached totally that was all my captain but um yeah, so it was just kind of coming back to that, Sammy, and and uh, and trying to get them back to the basics. We had to be more simple. We couldn't outskill the states. Um, they're so they were so strong. They're skating. They're passing. The way they moved the puck, it was so strong. Um, but we knew that you know we had to take advantage of of and we had to exploit the the you know the not the weaknesses that they had, but areas that we felt we could exploit, and the players had to buy into that. And I felt. We needed those three games, those two games prior to that last game. So we we needed to finish where we did. So again, this is karma maybe. We needed to finish so that we could play an extra game against the Slovaks, build some offensive confidence, um, refine our our team play, and then played against Finland. And that wasn't an easy game. And, and it, you know it was important for us to kind of get through that. But we started to see that they were they were doing. The things that we were asking them to do so they're starting to play a team game so i think again things happen for a reason i lost i almost lost sight of it and i needed my coaches i needed to reach and lean on the people around me to help and then of course troy helped he was our coach mentor and he you know he gave some feedback and that was invaluable but uh i think together and because we could come back to that foundation and they had that strength already in the dressing room I think it was maybe easier to come out of and uh, and go in the way that we did as compared to if that foundation wasn't as strong. I'm going to uh, open it up to much smarter coaches than me on this call for some questions. But first, I just want to talk about the come to Jesus moment. I think we've all had as athletes or coaches and one in particular, I don't know if I've ever shared it with, I don't know if Wally, you were part of the 2000 team in Mississauga, but uh for the first time ever in a world championship final, we were down two nothing going into the third period. And um, between periods, I thought I'm going to be the first goalie ever to lose in a world championship final. I'm going to be the first one to lose to the Americans. And um, I remember sitting there looking at each of the girls in the dressing room, just thinking what a privilege it is to be here, that even if we lose, what an incredible experience this has been. And um, just having that knowledge and that thought, I think propelled me to then go out and do the best I could and realize that, that, you know, I can't go down and score any goals. There's nothing I could do. And of course we had some pretty skilled players and ended up winning in overtime. Um, but that you have to have those moments. I think you have to sort of acknowledge if everything is just going hunky dory the whole time, you're never really thinking about 
just how fortunate and lucky we are to get to play this great game and that at the end of the day uh, we get to do what's fun and we get to enjoy it and that not every moment is going to be enjoyable but certainly the people that we get to meet along the way the adventures we get to take together that's what you take out of it and maybe I shouldn't have been taking that after a second period in a world championship final I should have been <laughs> focused on that at that moment but um I think it does help to reflect in those moments and to lean on the people around you. I was sitting lucky to sit beside one of my best friends, Jennifer Bottrell, who is just one of the most positive people ever and on one side and then Delaney Collins on the other, who uh, often is not. Um, and the three of us having that conversation and uh, sort of coming to sort of a confluence of uh, agreement that this is pretty incredible. And what can we all do to uh, go out and play the best we can this period? So. Um, anyways, I just wanted to tell that. Sorry, I know you co coach Delaney. She's a great friend of mine and um, has lived with my husband and I over the years at different times playing in Toronto. And I just, you know, appreciate so much the different characters uh, and people that I got to meet uh, along the way and um, got to be influenced by. So anyways, I will open it up to much smarter people on this call. Thank you so much, Howie, for sharing so much of the process. I'm sure uh, lots of people will have some questions about it, and uh, I'll open it up first to uh, our CEO, uh, Wally Kozak. Uh, 